In this video, we're going to investigate function composition. So function composition, which you might have seen before, is about what happens when you have two functions and you form a new function whose rule is to do one function and then do the other function. So let's be a bit more specific about that. I'm going to draw a diagram here. So I draw this to mean that f is a function whose domain is x and whose codomain is y. And we're now going to suppose that we've got another function g whose domain is y and whose codomain is a third set z. Well, in that case, if you've got an element, so little x in big X, then you can apply f to that, to that element and you'll get a new element f in y. But now g is a function whose domain is y, so we can now apply g to this element f of x and we get an element z. So we've started off with an element of x and we've ended up with an element of z. So it looks like we've got a new function here. We've defined a new function whose domain is x and whose codomain is z. And that function is called the composition of g and h, of g and f, sorry. So here's the definition then. We take um, a function f from x to y and a new function g from y to z. So the important part here is that the domain of g must be equal to the codomain of f. And in that case, the composition of g and f which we write like this with a little circle, or sometimes just as gf. That is the function whose domain is x, whose codomain is z, and whose rule is that g composed with f applied to x is equal to g of f of x. So this is a definition you've probably seen before. If you've um, studied a little bit of calculus, if you've met the chain rule for differentiating functions, perhaps, then the chain rule is all about compositions of functions. It's about the derivative of a composition of functions. So let me just say one thing about this composition, one important thing which people sometimes forget or get confused by when we're talking about compositions. And that is that if you have g composed with f, then that is not the function whose rule is do g, then do f. It's the function whose rule is do f, then do g. So we write g composed with f, g circle f, but the rule is do f, then do g. And that can seem a little bit confusing, so I would like to just make the point that it really does matter which one you do. So I'm going to draw my um, danger symbol here. Uh, here is the danger symbol. Um, Okay, there's my danger symbol. So the danger symbol is supposed to tell you that g composed with f written like this is the function whose rule is do f then do g. Right, because g composed with f of an input x was g of f of x, so we did f first. Now you might think this is um, this is silly, like why do we write it this way round? Why don't we write f composed with g for, for this composition? And the answer is, well, then the x would be in the wrong place. If we're writing uh, g composed with f and we're putting the x on the right, then it's clearly the f which is going to happen first. And actually, people did used to, to write thing, these things the other way around. In the 20th century, at least, um, people, especially in the mathematical field called group theory, which you'll learn about in Algebra 2, people really did used to write this to mean the function f applied to the input x. Um, but it's just too confusing for us to do this, even though it makes it a bit easier for us to um, talk about compositions. So we won't do this. We'll just remember that g composed with f is the function whose rule is do f first, then do g. In the last video, we met the identity function. You will remember that if you have a set x, then there is an identity function, which we wrote like this, whose domain and codomain were both x, and whose rule was do nothing. So the identity function applied to an input little x was just the same little x again. And if we have a function f from x to y, so I'm going to draw the same kind of diagram that I did last time. This means f is a function whose domain is x and whose codomain is y. Then we can do two different compositions. So we could think, OK, I've got the identity on y, which I could put here. And I've also got 
the identity on x, which I could put here. So we can form two compositions. We could compose f with the identity on x, or we could compose the identity on y with f. And what I want to, to show in this proposition is that when you compose f with the identity, you just get f again. It doesn't matter on which side you do it, you always just get the same function you start started off with. So let's think why that is. Let's, let's try and prove this result. And you should remember the definition of equality of functions. Two functions are equal if they have the same domain and the same codomain. And if you pick anything in the domain, then those two functions have the same output for that input. So if I want to check this, let's just check one of them. So f and f composed with the identity on x, those things have the same domain. Namely x. Uh, if you think about the composition f composed with the identity on x, that has the same domain as the identity on x. That was part of the definition of a composition of functions. And the domain of the identity on x is x again. So these two functions have the same domain x. They also have the same codomain y and if you've got any element of the domain well let's work out what the composition does so f composed with the identity applied to that thing x is by definition of the composition it's f of the identity of lowercase x all right of course the rule for the identity is it doesn't do anything so this is just f, f again so what you see there is that given the input x both f and f composed with the identity have the same output f of x so these two functions have the same domain same codomain same rule so they are equal by definition of equality of functions all right so you can check the other composition the same way and the uh, the summary of this slide is that when you compose with the identity, nothing happens. Okay, last function property for this video is the property of composition called associativity. So you've of course seen the associative property in two different contexts already. We're now going to see it in a third context. So again, I want to talk about composition of functions. So I'm going to draw a diagram. Uh, we're going to have a function f from x to y. We're going to have a function g from y to z. And we're going to have a function h from z to w. So we've got four sets, x, y, z, and w. And a function f from x to y, g to y, g from y to z, and h from z to w. And it seems like we can now form two different compositions of all three functions. Because since g goes from y to z, and x, f goes from x to y, I could form the function g composed with f from x to z and I could form the composition g h composed with g from y to w and then I could form so two different compositions of all three things right I could do h composed with g composed with f. So that will be a function from x to w. And I can also form the composition uh, with the brackets in the other place. I can form h composed with g composed with f. So both of those two things are functions whose domain is x and whose codomain is w. And what the associativity property says is that they are in fact equal. So this is the result that we'll prove. Um, it says if you've got a function f from x to y, g from y to z, and h from z to w, so in other words, that the codomain of f is the same as the domain of g, and the codomain of g is the same as the domain of h, then these two compositions are equal. So again, if we claim that two functions are equal, we've got to show they've got the same codomain, the same domain, and that they have the same input, the same output for every input from their common domain. So 
Well, the thing about codomains and domains is true. H composed with G composed with F, and H composed with G composed with F. Those things have the same domain, namely X, and the same codomain, namely W, and if we pick an element in the codomain, let's say any little x in our domain, capital X, what happens when we apply one of these functions? So let's just work it out. H composed with G composed with F at X. What is this? Well, we are applying a composition of two functions to X. So by definition, this is H of G composed with F of x. Okay, and according to the rule up for function compositions again, what we've got here is h of g of f of x. Okay, there we go. Let's do this for the other composition. So if I want h composed with g composed with f at x, then according to the definition of a composition here, what you've got here is h composed with g of f of x. Okay, and now you're applying a composition h composed with g to an input f of x. So that is h of g of f of x. Okay, and as you can see, those two things are the same. These are the same. Okay, so our two functions, our two different compositions, actually have the same domain, same codomain, and the same output for every input. So they are equal as functions. That is the associativity property for function composition.